Hi, everyone. Pastor Galen, lead pastor at Shine Hills Church. Thank you so much for joining us on this podcast. We hope that these podcasts will be a real encouragement to you on your spiritual journey. You can also connect with Shine Hills at shinehills.org. Hope you enjoy the program. We are across the street and around the world. Shine Hills. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to our March Through Genesis. And this is Genesis chapter 14. And I'm going to warn you in advance that these names are not going to be pronounced correctly, so don't quote me on any of them. Uh, but a lot of names, but, but Ken, the, we, we've been talking about these names and these places. Mm-hmm. And once you get to figuring out, not necessarily the names, but there's one name in particular that we need to really pay attention to, but um, there's some places that really make this story interesting. And I think, so we have to remember that Abraham, at the time of Abram, we're talking about 2,000 years before Christ. Mm-hmm. Okay. So there's, that's gives you some idea. Uh, we just had the separation of lot and, um, and, uh, Abram and they, one lot took one direction and Abram took another and God said, okay, here's your land. Well, now this is what happened in verse 14 in the days of Emphel, king of Shinar. Now we've got, we've got, I want you to point to these while I'm, I'm okay. reading them. Okay. But there's the land of Shinar is actually all the way through that fertile crescent from Basically, I mean that's over by that's Nineveh is here, um, uh, Babylon's here. Uh, this is the Persian Gulf, and so uh, Kuwait would be down here. Land of Shinar is that fertile crescent, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's a big, a big area. And so, in the days of Ampharel, king of Shinar, uh, Arioch, king of Eleazar, and I don't know if we ever figured out where that one is. Yeah, I, we, I couldn't locate that one. Now, at Cheddar Lammer, I want you to remember this guy. I, we could call him King Cheddar if you want, the Cheddar <laughs> Cheese guy, because this is the guy we need to remember. He, he actually plays a pretty big role. And but he's over in Elam. Which, which is on this map. Yeah. Right, right here. And that's in Susa. I mean, that's the land of Susa. Susa is important because that's where Esther came before the king in, in, in Susa. And that was the Medo-Persian king, I think, uh, Darius or one of the one of those Persian kings, and so. But that was like fifteen hundred years later. Yeah. Right. Way so later. Yep. Now we have the ruins. We've seen the ruins of of this area, and it's got a river runs through it. It's very fortified, and we're going to see that King Cheddar is that's where he hung out, and it was probably a very fortified area. Probably why he was the main force uh, in this whole land of Shinar. Uh, very, very possibly, because we do know that the ruins there in in uh, Susa, in El- in the area of Elam, land of Elam, was uh, was very significant. And title king of Goim. Now we, I think we found a Goim up here too. It was it was in this area. I mean, we might have found it on a different map, but I think all these kings are basically from this fertile crescent that are mentioned here. Yes. Now, how far is that from the action over here by the Dead Sea? If my calculations are correct, uh, go back, Casey. Just instead of being able to take the shortcut across, right. the, you know, they the, they missed the trolley or whatever. It, it, but they had to go, obviously, following the water. Right. I and mean, that would be the significant factor there. So they'd follow it here, down to here, and it would be about eight hundred miles at least. Isn't that unbelievable? Eight hundred miles. So that's a that's a long journey. Of course, those guys. That's the the military back in those days. That's just kind of what they did. They set out, but. Anyway, these kings that we just mentioned from this this area of Shinar made war with Bera, king of Sodom, Berisha, king of Gomorrah, Sinab, king of Admara, and Shember, king of Zim, Zub, Zobium. Now, I think all these, we know where Sodom and Gomorrah is. If we can go back to one of those maps, um, it's, a, it's by the Dead Sea, right? It's right, right in that area. There you go. It's got to be Really, in this whole region, it could be Sodom and Gomorrah could have been here. This is very dry and arid. This is a salt sea today, mm-hmm. Dead Sea. Mm-hmm. But probably in that day, this was all fertile, all the way up and down, because that's what Lot chose. It was the more fertile, the more lush area. Big valley here. These, this is a big, these Moabite my, mountains are huge. Uh, this re- ridge here is really high. And so this was, this is really low. It's, uh, and now it's very dry and very dead, like the, you know, the Dead Sea indicates. But it's, um, at, at that time, probably very, very fertile, very beautiful. 
Um, and so these kings came against, uh, all the kings of that fertile crescent came against the kings over here. So that's the, that's the battle. And it's a long distance between the two. Yeah. Um, and all these joined forces in the valley of Siddim, that is the Salt Sea. So they came all the way over to Siddim, which is this, this area actually says this is the Siddim Valley. And so they came over to probably this area, the, the base, if you will, of the Dead Sea. Twelve years they had served Chedor Lamar. Here's the Cheddar King, right? He's the guy from over at Elam, over at Susa. Um, here's the Cheddar King. They served him first, but in the 13th year they rebelled. In the 14th year, Chedor Lamar, the king, and the kings who were with him came and defeated Rephaim and another king, and Zuzim and Ham, and anyway, they defeated a whole bunch of guys in the hill country of Shiar and the far as far as El Paran on the border of the wilderness, they turned back and came to in Misfat, that is Kedish. Now, Kedish, I know where Kedish Barnea is. Kedish Barnea is down, down here, really, really low between Israel and Egypt, okay. right? So uh, that's that area. I don't know if that's the area they're talking about. It just says Kedish. So it just makes me wonder. I, it would be kind of out of the way, so it doesn't, doesn't square in my head. Then they turned back and they came to Kedish and defeated all the country of Amalekites. So I think we saw the Amalekites. Uh, Amorites, the Amalekites are up here. So I think that's close. It's the Amalekites would have been closer to the coast, it looks like. This is this map doesn't quite go over far enough, but this is real close to um, the Gaza Strip. Oh, so yeah. people can have an idea of where that's, that's at. Yeah. And, and possibly the Amalekites were spread further south, and maybe with this battle, they tended to retreat back a little bit. Okay, so that's very possible. possibility. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in the hill country, then they turned back and came to uh, Kedish and defeated all the country of Amalekites, and also to the Amorites who were dwelling in Heza Tamar. And here's the, the Amorites are... I just saw those. There's the Amorites. There's the Amalekites. So it gives you an idea. It's down in this area. They came clear over here, had a battle with these kings here, but they also had a battle with these guys, apparently. That's what it looks like to me. I don't know why all that's important, but hang, hang with us, because this I think there makes a point here that's pretty interesting. Then the king of Sodom and the king of Gomorrah, the kings of Edma and Zebulun, which I don't know where Edma and Zebulun, but I have a feeling it's around Sodom and Gomorrah. The king of Bela of Zoar went out and they joined in battle of in the valley of Siddim with Chedorlaomer, king of Elam, title king of Goem, and all these Shinar, all these guys, Eleazar. So they had these basically that group over there by the by the uh, all this group and yeah. all of this group. Had a battle down in here. That's that's what we get. Yeah, that's what we get from all this because we did a little work and this is the best we've got. Uh, verse 13, 15 says, "Then one of them who had escaped told Abram the Hebrew, who was living in the oaks of Mamre at the Amorite." Okay, now we need to get that map up here again. The other the other map, real quick. There you go. The Amorite is here, and Mamre is somewhere in here. The oaks of Mamre, and you were saying that they these are. This was a, actually a guy's place or a guy, not an area. Yeah, the, from verse 13 there in chapter 14, it, um, it's actually a person that uh, Mamre is. And I, for years, I assumed it's an area, yeah. That it was, yeah, just a geographic area, like yeah. seeing the Oaks of Cheyenne or whatever. Yeah, sure. But it's, it's actually a person. Yeah. Because it says that this guy and his brother, he has two brothers. Right. The Mamre, the Amorite, brother of Eskol and Anner. And uh, these were allies of Abram. Okay, when Abram heard that his kinsmen had been captive, taken captive, he led forth his trained men born in his house. All of them went to pursue as far as Dan, and he divided forces against them by night, he and his servants, and defeated them and pursued them to Heb Hebra, north of Damascus. Then he brought back the possessions and also brought back his kinsmen, Lot, with his possessions and the women and the people. Okay, so here's the thing I think is fascinating about the story. Okay, let's go back to our, our map. There we go. Um, this let's go back to the other map real quick. Does it have Damascus? There's Damascus. Okay. Yeah. So so basically, uh, Abram was over here hanging out with all his 
his tribe and his clans. Mm-hmm. And there was a couple of other groups that was with, with him, with allies with him. Yeah. He heard about this battle, and these guys on from this end came over and defeated these guys and took Lot and his family, which would be Abraham's nephew, and all their possessions and all the women and everything. And they and so Abram got word of that. And as soon as he gets word of that, he says, All right, guys, we're gonna go after these guys. And Abram chased them all the way up to Dan. Dan is the tribe of Dan is up here north of the Galilee, somewhere in here. And half of them went this way, and half of them went to Damascus. And they chased them down. They found, they got Lot, they got all the women, they got all the loot mm-hmm. from these kings. Yeah. Now, okay, let's go back to the big map real quick. I want you to think about how all these the, from the land of Shinar. Now, granted, they're 800 miles from home, so maybe they didn't bring their A team. I don't know. <laughs> but <laughs> maybe but the, they were tuckered out. <laughs> maybe they were tuckered out. But think about. You know, Abraham gets word of this, and he chases him down, and he gets all the loot, he gets the women, he gets a lot, he gets all this stuff, and he brings them back. That's amazing to me. Yeah, and it wasn't like he only went 10 miles. That was about 140 miles. To chase chased. him to Damascus, that's yeah, true. Yeah, it's a, it's a big, long, long chase. So it, it gives you some idea that Abram, he was, uh, he and his guys, I mean, they, they could do battle too. Right. Yeah. I mean, uh, they were shepherds, they were herdsmen for sure. Yeah. Um, and they knew how, but you know, in favor of the Lord was with him. Yeah. Um, and, but anyway, he, that was pretty amazing. And he's also in alliance with this, um, Mamre and his, his yeah. two brothers. So it wasn't just Abraham's That's true. S- servants that it was a, some kind of alliance that they had made. And so yeah. all these guys are helping the chase. Yeah. And they went up there and got Lot. They got the women. They got the children. They got the loot. Mm-hmm. And they brought it back. Now, this is important because I'm, I, I think we should spend more time on this because, and we're just going to end right here. Um, just know that Abram chased them past the Damascus. And then when he comes back in the Valley of the Kings, and I we're going to take our best guess where the Valley of the Kings are, he meets um, Melchizedek. And that story has always fascinated me. And I, I want us to talk about how Abram honors Melchizedek. I think it's a fascinating, it's mentioned in Hebrews. It's a fascinating story. So stick with us. Uh, we'll, we'll take you through, we're plowing through Genesis. And this is one of those kind of a complicated battle, but it basically proves that, that uh, Abram and his troops were uh, with God's grace, by God's grace, were, were forced to be reckoned with. Yep. Thanks for joining us. 